Assalamu alaikum. Uh, today we shall move to the next part or the third part of discourse analysis. And uh, if you remember, in our first two lectures, we talked about cohesion and coherence. ما عدا شعبة واحدة يعني صار شوية تضرب جدل بعدين عيد الهم المادة فيما يخص الكوهيرنس ف we talked about cohesion and coherence today we shall move to talk about another topic in the field of discourse analysis and actually we have said this in our first two lectures we said by discourse we mean language or text and whether the text is written or oral يعني conversation our job as linguist is to analyze these situations these conversations today we shall talk about the analysis of speech or the analysis of conversations you know in any piece of conversation there are two people at least one is speaking, the other is listening. So we have speaker and we have a listener. And of course they exchange roles. They exchange roles. A speaker can be a hearer and a hearer can be a speaker because they are, they are involved in conversation. So when you are part of a conversation, Sometimes you speak, sometimes you listen. Okay? So, when we do any analysis for this conversation, what is our, our job? What are we looking for? Of course, are we similar as speakers in using language? No, of course. Each one of us is different as far as the use of language is concerned. We use language in different ways so when we analyze language we as linguists I mean we are looking for certain features we are looking for the situation of the conversation we are looking for the setting of the conversation what is the setting of the conversation that is to, by setting I mean what is the background Okay, so if there are two people speaking, I need to know what is the situation of the conversation. Where does the situation take place? Is it at a hospital? Is it at a school? Is it at a restaurant? Is it at university? Is it at a factory? I can understand all these and I can arrive at all these points through the analysis of the language, the language of the speaker and the hearer, through the analysis of the context of situation of that uh, situation or of that text or conversation. I have two people speaking and we said Everyone is using the language in a different way, in a special way. So what are they doing? Is it a debate? Is it an interview? Is it a discussion among friends? Is it an interrogation? You know interrogation by a policeman and a suspect? I can understand is it a friendly situation? Sorry. Is it a friendly situation between friends? Is it, as I said, interrogation between a policeman and a suspect? Or a friendly situation between a friend and a friend? Or is it just a conversation between a teacher and a student? or by a doctor and patient. We are after, in the analysis of speech, we are after these things. 
there are two people speaking. I need to identify the role of each speaker. I need to identify the role of each speaker. Whether they are equal, for example, or not. Whether speaker A is superior to speaker B. Whether speaker A is inferior to speaker B. You know, superior, inferior. واحد على الثاني. And by superior, inferior, I mean socially speaking. Socially speaking, in a social context. Of course, if you talk to somebody who is stranger to you, you use a certain language. You try to use very polite language we are, because you are strangers. If you talk to your teacher, you are, of course, going to be very polite in using your language. But if you talk to your friend, you are going to use a very friendly language, which is informal most of the time. So you have formal speech, you have informal speech. You have formal style, you have an informal style. So our job as linguists is to analyze these features of language. What are the speakers? Who are they? What are they talking about? Are they talking about physics? Are they talking about linguistics? Are they talking about news? Are they talking about Iraq football match? We can understand all these types of tips from the way they speak, from the analysis of their language. I can't tell. I can't tell whether their their uh, style is formal. And if their style is formal. Of course, they are not friends. They are strangers to each other. And if the style is very informal, it means the speakers are friends. They are friends among each other, and one another. So we can arrive at all the information that we need from the analysis of the language or from the analysis of the style used by each one of the speakers. In, in English, that says style is man. Each one of us is characterized by the way he or she is using his own language, his own style. And by the way, style nowadays is used by everyone, by educated, not educated, by Arab speakers. We use it in our daily life. We use it in Iraqi Arabic, the word style and stylish. What does it mean? You have a style in the way you dress. You have a style in the way you behave. And we have a style in the way you use language. And this gives to you a sort of finger print. It gives you peculiarity, <laughs> like your finger print. So this is your style and this is my style. That's why if I am given or if you are given a poem, if you are given a poem and you are asked to identify the speaker who says this poem. Once you look at the style, once you look at the structure of the poem, the topic of the poem, the words of the poem, you can say, you can tell that this poem is written by a Sayyab, for example, or is written by Nazar Qabani, or, is written, or it is written by a pre-Islamic poet, Sha'ar Jahi, pre-Islamic poet. Why, why can you tell this? From the language used by each one. Yani Pre-Islamic pre -Islamic poetry is characterized by very difficult language, by very 
difficult style rhetoric balagha aye but our our new poems are characterized by very simple language right most of the time not always yes but this is a way you can tell look at a poem and you can say this is a sayab look at a poem and you can say this is nazar qabban so when we analyze language when we analyze conversations when we analyze speech we are after these features we try to look at the way language structures and we can find out look at this whether the speakers for example uh, are friends strangers uh, men women young old equal all these features can be discovered from the way you, you speak we know that men and women use a different type of language هاي بعدين ناخذها لما نحكي على language and society in the in the second semester. Men and women use different types of cell. نحن مو مرات شخص من يحكي نقول هذا يحكي مثل البنات او مثل النسوان. What does this mean? What does this mean? It means he is using a language which is similar to the language of female speakers. So this is peculiarity. This is a fingerprint. Our job, our job as linguist is to analyze conversations and to analyze these types of features that we can find in any conversation and if we are part of any conversation there is something that we should pay attention to turn taking when we speak There are roles for us. We take turn. كل من يأخذ دورة بالحكي, right? So if you are part of a conversation, do you accept to be interrupted by someone else? تحب واحد يقاطعك when you speak? No, of course. Yes, we do this most of the time in our speech, but in 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 theory, in theory, not in practice, there are certain strategies that we adopt. In order to use turn taking, in order not to be offended by other people, right? If somebody is talking and I interrupt him, this is unacceptable. Is it acceptable to interrupt? You know, interrupt at any. It is appropriate to interrupt other people. Huh? No, of course. This is rude. Rude. When I speak, I don't accept anyone to interrupt me. When somebody is speaking, he or she is not willing to be interrupted by other people. Right? We finish and we let other people speak. But actually, there are certain... How to, to practice them? How to do them in reality? How to experience them? Actually, actually, there are certain strategies we adopt in avoiding rudeness. For example, if I speak with someone, I give him a hint that I have finished what I have said. And you are ready to speak. You are ready to shoot. Either by using intonation. Sometimes I use a rising intonation when I ask a question. I, I give you a rising intonation or I use a rising intonation which means I am asking you a question. I expect you to answer me. Or I use a falling intonation which means I have already finished what I want to say and I am ready to listen to you. Or sometimes we use uh, a neutral intonation. Look at the way we use Iraqi Arabic for example. Uh, for example, Iraq Arab. In Khalas, we go Sahih, Musahih, with rising intonation. It means I am expecting an answer from you. And in English, in English, we also use this rising intonation, this type of rising intonation. We say, I say something, and at the very end, I say, right. It means I am expecting an answer from you, whether what I have said is right or wrong. Of course, when we speak, Face to face, things are very easy. 
I can look at you, you look at me, and we understand each other. We use agreed upon strategies that show the termination of our sentences or utterances, whether we have finished or not. But sometimes when we use phones, it is difficult to identify the beginning or the end of conversation. It is, it is difficult to understand turn taking in conversations. I show you uh, reporters. You know reporters? Whether in English and Arabic, look at them. When they talk to somebody in the studio and they are away, they use certain intonations or certain strategies to give a hint to the presenter, to the show presenter, that they have finished already what they want to say and they are expecting uh, him or her to speak or to say something or to comment on what they have already said. So there are completion points. Yani, from the word complete. They indicate that we have completed our conversation. They have completed what we want to say and we are ready to listen to other people speaking. So this is what is meant by turn taking. And this is what is meant by speech analysis or, or conversation analysis. We analyze language to look for information. Information related to the role of the speakers, information related to the way we use language, our roles, what are our roles in a conversation. You talk to your friends, you are equal. But when you talk to your teacher, student teacher, you have an equal social status. Patient doctor or doctor patient, they have an equal social status. So always we are after the analysis of these situations to arrive at certain findings, certain information. We are after findings. Yani sort of discoveries. We discover who the speaker is, who the, the hearer is, what is the situation. Where is the place of conversation? In which place? Which time? Which time? Is it now? Is it in the past? Is it very old? Is it in the 70s? Is it in the 90s? All these features can be discovered from the way we speak. So this is all for today. We shall continue maybe, uh, sure, not maybe, uh, next time. Wish you the very best of luck. Thank you very much. Thank you.